Oh, just me. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, we'll provide an update. Uh, Acting Secretary Duke, uh, Administrator Long, and uh, Chris Krebs are uh, senior senior official performing the duties of the Undersecretary from the Department of Homeland Security. We'll provide you an update. Just to give you an idea, they both have uh, commitments on the backside, so we'll have about 25 minutes with you. So, thanks. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us to continue as we continue to respond to Hurricane Irma. Our number one concern today is with saving lives. The U.S. Coast Guard, Customs and Border Protection, and Department of Defense have deployed significant assets to the area to assist in search and rescue efforts. We are very pleased that the weather is allowing this um, effort on search and rescue. We are constrained by ge geography and our bases of operation are more limited than our response to Hurricane Harvey. We are, we are working to get as many aircraft in the air as possible. I urge everyone impacted by the storm to continue to pay attention to your state and local officials. They will let you know when it's safe to return home. Be patient. The federal government effort is working closely with our state and local partners in, resp in our response and recovery efforts. I would like to thank President Trump and Vice President Pence for their attention to this storm and their concern for communities that are affected. The White House and the entire Cabinet have been very supportive of the first responders and the survivors of Hurricane Irma. This, a storm of this magnitude needs a team effort and we've seen tremendous response from our federal partners. Nearly 22,000 federal personnel are already on the front lines and more continue to deploy. We face a long and challenging road ahead with the Department of Homeland Security. Our federal, state, tribal and local partners will continue to stand with the people affected by the storm. Whether you are in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands, we are here for you and we are here for the long haul. While we are ramping up operations in Florida, for those of you in Texas and Louisiana affected by Harvey, we are still with you. I actually spoke to Governor Abbott yesterday and will continue to support the state rebuilding efforts. I would now like to introduce Chris Krebs, the Assistant Secretary for Infrastructure Protection at DHS, who is currently running our National Protection and Programs Directorate. He'll talk to you about power, water, and communications in Florida. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Very briefly, uh, on the ground in Florida, we are looking at a little over five to six million customers without power. That translates to about 15 million people without power. Oh, Department of Homeland Security is working very closely with the Department of Energy uh, and the local utilities to get the crews back in there, do damage assessments, clean up debris, and hang new lines. Uh, I do ask that everyone have patience. Uh, this is going to take some time to restore, and in some so, uh, some circumstances it will be a situation about rebuilding. Uh, hurricane force winds can significantly damage infrastructure. Those crews are still down there right now getting a sense of what is going on on the ground. Now with power out, power pretty much drives everything. Lights are out. There may be impacts on lo uh, local water and wastewater treatment facilities. Uh, most of those facilities should have uh, generator and fuel supplies for a number of days. However, it is a priority. Uh, once it's safe to re-enter, it is a priority to get those electricity crews back in on the ground. Communications uh, is also an issue, particularly down in the Virgin Islands, but in Florida uh, there is some cell service disruption and maybe some wireline disruption as well. Again, same thing applies. As soon as it's safe to re-enter, those crews are going to be back in there. They should be doing damage assessments uh, late yesterday and into today. Last thing I would add is that uh, Hurricanes Harvey and Irma are linked. With Harvey, we had a significant amount of the nation's refining capacity offline, as well as distribution through some of the pipelines through the southeast. As a result, there uh, may be some f uh, fuel supply shortages throughout the southeast. Uh, that's why last week the Secretary issued the jo a Jones Act waiver to allow uh, easier distribution of fuel throughout some of those ports throughout. So uh, I do ask everyone to have patience. We're uh, getting on this quickly, and uh, we'll uh, be here to answer questions. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
So it's very clear to all of us that the president's goal is to take care of people. And, uh, you know, this, this is a unique event compared to what Harvey was. Harvey's damage areas were combined, you know, compi confined, excuse me, to about 50 counties within Texas and a few in, in Louisiana. This one's complex because of the uh, multiple states involved. We also have uh, the Seminole tribe that, that comes directly to FEMA for support and then also our partners in the U.S. Virgin Islands as well as Puerto Rico. So during a complex event like this, it's very important to double down on communications and what we're doing is to make sure that we have clear lines of communication not only with uh, our governors but the state divisions of emergency management as well, uh, including our, our tribal partners in the Seminole tribe. So we will continue to do that. Um, as the Secretary and Chris Krebs have both said, this is going to be a frustrating event. It's going to take some time to allow people back into their homes, particularly in the in the Florida Keys. If you look at what happened in, in Florida, obviously Monroe County took the brunt of the hit and a majority of the homes there have been impacted in some ways with uh, several of them destroyed and, and many more with major damage. Uh, the, you know, so we're having to go down and make sure that it's a safe place for, for people to return um, so that we don't have loss of life after Irma uh, passes through. So the bottom line is, is that uh, later today I will be headed to uh, Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands to meet with both governors to make sure that uh, we're on the correct pathway to uh, recovery there. Obviously, power restoration is one of the biggest goals along with, um, you know, and power restoration is the largest goal right now in Puerto Rico. You know, there were over a million people without power. We've made a lot of progress and that's down to uh, around 300,000. That will continue uh, to improve. Uh, for the U.S. Virgin Islands, we're directly working with Governor Mapp to understand his issues as well. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that safety and security is upheld, and we're uh, continuing to work with him to roll in um, military police through our National Guard partners to those islands to ensure safety and security. Uh, we're also pushing a lot of commodities forward. We've established air bridges uh, through our partners with the DOD uh, and, and the Navy with the ships that are offshore there and we continue to understand the life sustainment missions uh, to, support, to support our partners in, in the Virgin Islands. Moving to the continental United States, um, the president, as you all know, moved very quickly to put forward presidential disaster uh, declaration. It's very important, specifically in Florida right now, um, the counties under individual assistance declarations, there's, there's quite a few, so I wanna read those off. Broward County, Palm Beach, Clay, Duval, Flagler, Putnam, St. John's, Charlotte, Collier, Hillsboro, Lee, Manatee, Miami-Dade, Monroe, Pinellas, Sarasota. Um, these counties right now, if you're a citizen in those counties, you can go to, to disasterassistance.gov to begin registering for assistance if you received damages and are having hardship. And in some cases, um, you know, the first line of defense is file your insurance when you're allowed to get back home, file your insurance. Um, not only your personal insurance, but also through the NFIP program, the National Flood Insurance Program, if you're a policyholder, you know, once you return home, please, you know, call your private insurer to activate that policy if you've had damage and we can begin to process, the, begin the process to have money flowing to help you in those, in that regard. Um, the other thing here is, is that, you know, we're also watching uh, the continuing situation in Jacksonville overnight, Jacksonville. Uh, and and the, the areas around the St. John's River were heavily impacted. We're, we're still conducting some life, or life safety missions in and around that area because of the flooding. Uh, we were very aware of it uh, last night and continuing to support our state and local partners there. Uh, again, uh, this issue is passing through. There's large, large scale power outages in uh, almost a million people in Georgia without power today as well. But um, we have been working with our partners at the Department of Energy to uh, pre-stage power crews, not only in Florida, but all over the Southeastern United States. But let me reiterate, uh, you know, it takes a long time for this infrastructure to come back up. It may take multiple days, if not weeks in some areas, as we've been saying before the storm hit. So with that, um, you know, one, one final graphic that we have up here um, is our force laydown to show how dynamic uh, this response is, uh, but, as you, but, as that, but as I have said and as the sec Secretary reiterated, it's all about communication, clearly identifying how to support our state and local partners, and that's exactly what's taking place today as we start to turn the corner and provide a, uh, a road to recovery. So with that, we'll open it up to any questions. Yes, ma'am.
Uh, so scientists say these massive storms only get warmer in warmer water linked to climate change. The Department of Defense has said that the U.S. must pay closer attention to climate change. As the head of the agency who has to respond to these sort of massive storms uh, that require your staff to be on 24-7 for days at a time and essentially wipe out the budget, do you feel uh, that uh, the government needs to focus on climate change in a broader way at this point following these storms. I think the government needs to definitely focus on disaster resiliency twofold. Um, disaster resiliency, the only way we achieve that is, is that we have to create a true culture of preparedness within our citizenry. We have to help them understand their true vulnerabilities uh, based on where they dwell and where they work. Uh, and it's not just getting supplies for three days, as many people are learning uh, how important that is. It's also having the, the savings account for three to six months to overcome simple emergencies as well as the disaster to and activate insurance policies and everything else. When it comes to the infrastructure side, you know, I think we do have a, lot, a long way to go. Uh, local governments and state governments need to consider, you know, best practices when it comes to, to land use planning in the future. Uh, regardless of what causes disasters, it's our job, you know, within the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA to manage the consequences. But how important do you think it is besides preparedness for these disasters to focus on what is potentially causing these really massive storms? I mean, we, we have to understand and we have to, we have to look at data to make uh, meaningful decisions on the way forward. So I, I think we can all agree that you know, we do that uh, on a daily basis. That's how we estimate how much power is going to be knocked out or how many people are going to be influenced. But here again, it goes back to the only way we become resilient as a nation is we have to create that true cultural preparedness within our citizenry, which we do not have. And then we also have to look at how we go forward when it comes to infrastructure protection. Secretary, yeah. question for you? I think I think it is important. We live in a changing world, and as uh, uh, the uh, FEMA administrator said, that we always have to look at not just the response, but the preparedness and the resilience. And I think it's important that as we come together as a country, we, we look at, at the uh, changes in our world and make sure both in planning and response that we um, we are adapting appropriately. I hear you saying about the response and preparedness, but what about the cause? How important do you think it is for government uh, to be focused in on the cause? What might be behind these massive storms? Or I, 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 you know, the, the data, I, I don't know what it, it, it particularly uh, indicates. We haven't had a major storm like this in quite a while. We knew this was going to be a, a hard hurricane season. It was predicted by NOAA. So I would think that um, our sister agencies and NOAA and others are looking at um, whether this is an anomaly year or a trend year. And I think it's important to know that. And we will continue working with them as they look at the data and, and try to determine um, is, this, is this a year of anomaly or a year of, uh, of trend. And when will you guys go to Florida? I know you're going to Puerto Rico, then, but right. yeah, yeah. yeah um, we, we likely will be going later this week. What's important is because of the path of this storm, we are just beginning search and rescue in earnest today, and so it's important that that be the singular focus. So um, we believe that with that starting um, at sunrise this morning, we should be able to be in the area safely without disrupting any search and rescue later this week. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Picture down in Puerto Rico and Florida. Are you hearing reports of any looting or any other crimes going on? Uh, obviously, there is some social media trending when it comes down to the United States Virgin Islands. But I've been in close contact with Governor Mapp, and and we are helping him to address uh, some localized issues. But there is not widespread security issues across those islands. So we need to, you know, we have to deconflict some of the rumors that are there. But as I said earlier, um, Governor Mapp, we're helping him to facilitate mutual aid with our National Guard partners to bring in military police to make sure that we maintain safety and security. And uh, I will be there uh, over the next 48 hours to put my eyes on the ground to, to make sure that we're, we're making progress. So visibility like in, in the Florida Keys, do you know how many people might be needing search and rescue? What, what do you know about what's going on? Uh, so this, look, I always, 
let me let me clarify anytime I start to give specific numbers they're going to change in the minute we walk out that door so some of the initial estimates are and this is why we ask people to evacuate largely from storm surge 25 percent of the houses initially have been destroyed and 65 percent have major damage basically every house in the keys was impacted in some way or another this is why we ask people to to, to, to leave. Regarding fatalities, that's up to the county coroners. I don't want to get into that number because it's honestly like chasing rabbits. Do you have aircraft up looking for people? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, our, our partners at the United States Coast Guard, DOD assets, you know, other partners through, we have Customs and Border Patrol out of the, the Department of Homeland Security. There are many that are supporting this mission. As I said in my opening comments, this is a more complicated response because of the peninsula and the islands. So we are partnering with DOD. DOD has provided some sea assets, aircraft carriers that can be used for landing and refueling. What we're trying to do is get the cycle time shorter. So while we have assets, we have over 40 um, um, helicopters from Coast Guard um, operational now. Um, it is a more complicated response than when you have refueling and landing right nearby. So um, we are uh, vigilant and um, working on it. That is the focus of today. Yeah. Time for one more. Started yet, right? I'm sorry. Air rescues like haven't started yet in the Keys. Oh. Right? Yes, they have, but but this is different. So. In, in portions, yes. I mean, obviously, air rescues have happened, particularly in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and and as the you know the you know not only our Florida National Guard, the Florida National Guard's heavily involved. They've been providing rescues, but this is different than Harvey. This is not a flood with standing water. Um, storm surge comes in, inundates, destroys, and then quickly recedes. So in many cases, you're not going to see all of the helicopters that are necessarily needed. We're not plucking people off of their houses and different things. Uh, this is not as nearly as big a swift water rescue issue as Harvey was. So these two storms are dramatically different. Uh, and just because you don't see a helicopter doesn't mean we're not ac actively putting forward the missions. I also wanted to end with thanking our industry partners to help with evacuations, especially from the islands. Um, we had Delta um, have a charter flight um, evacuating Americans. Similarly, in Harvey, Southwest Airlines helped us with some of the uh, evacuations out of the area and others. So I um, wanted to take this moment to thank uh, industry partners for their support, too. Yep. And then uh, one final message again, like Harvey, the whole community is going to have to come around the southeastern United States and our partners in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, as well as the Seminole tribe. Um, you know, the whole community needs to be involved. Get involved at invoad.org. And again, activate your insurance policies if you've had damage and go to disasterassistance.gov if you've been impacted as well. Thank you, folks.